thank you so much for taking the time to do this. I, I, I've i been a huge fan of yours and Hanoi since 1988. And, you know, it's always a cool. pleasure to talk to you. And the last time we talked was 2015 when Blackout States came out. And since then, you've, oh, right, yeah. yeah, and since then you've put out what I think is your best work to date with uh, this this new album, One Man, One Man Gang. And it is so fantastic like the energy was so high and you were just i don't know i just got a sense of energy and excitement from the album and you must have just been on top of the world with making this record yeah I, i'm i'm very happy with it and uh, the thing was we had we had no uh, deadline or anything when we were doing it we had no management at the time and we our deal with uh, universal was up so we didn't have a label uh, so we didn't. We were just making a record on our own, and uh, uh, actually recorded the basic tracks uh, in 2018 in March. We, we were in the studio for a couple of weeks, two or three weeks, whatever. And we recorded 18 tracks, and then we took a little break for the summer for the festivals, and then went back in the studio in the fall. And uh, me, mainly me and uh, Rich Jones and Steve Conte, to uh, finish up the overdubs and and also. Choosing the songs for the album, I I had I mean there's a lot of good songs and uh, a couple of them were left for bonus tracks. There's two bonus tracks in Japan, and there's one more bonus track which I don't know what's going to happen with that. But um, <clears throat> the other ones were too good to be bonus tracks, you know. <laughs> Probably save them for the next, next the album. And there was a time when there were 14 songs, and then I was like, I can't get rid of these two. And then, then I just decided one day I thought, no, 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 it's got to be like the 40. 40 Mitch Tops is a good album that you want to listen to again after you've done listening to it you want to hear it again it's got to be that way so uh, so I uh, we ended up with this uh, this entirety which I think works really good with all the the pacing of the album and everything and the style of songs and the, the music it's really uh, a good entirety as a whole I think it's uh, you know one of the most successful ones we've done if not the successful one in terms of uh, having a you know, of course, all killers, no fillers, but uh, also the, just the way it goes in, uh, into like having a song like Heaven is a Free State is <laughs> it's, uh, very unusual for, I mean, five years ago, there was no way we would have had a song like that on an album. But mm -hmm. for this this time, you know, that band has come of age and uh, really uh, evolved to a point where uh, I think it's cool to have a song like that as, a, as an air break. Uh, in amongst all the hard hitting stuff, and, and at that point on the record, the third to last song, it's it's really cool to go into a new different musical world, and then sort of you know, then it's then get back into the more harder rocking stuff, and then uh, low life in high places. I think it's a great great finisher for this whole thing. It's, uh, that was such a great way to close out an album. Like I actually went in and listened to this album probably three times in one sitting. You know, what I kind of got out of the album as a whole was that, you know, you were having so much fun and it really kind of radiated through the, the music and the band. I mean, this is... The, you can tell that this band has really become a band. You know, it's not just Michael Monroe with some backup guys like you guys really feel like a strong entity now and that really comes through in these songs cool that's great that's great to hear because that's really what it is and that you know i can't fake that it's it comes across on the record and when we play live you, you can tell that you know we're the best of friends and so we have a great time together and it's so getting better so uh yeah that's nice to hear it uh, comes across that strong <laughs> With every passing Michael Monroe album, I go, oh, my God, if anything, just come to Atlanta and you can stay in my basement and just play, you know, <laughs> you know we can jam, you know, because, you know, I mean, you know, there's so much energy behind the live performance. And I'm sure you've heard this a right. lot. And I've heard other people say that. I mean, this is energy in a live performance that seems to lack a lot in modern music and that's almost kind of a dying thing where where artists just went out on stage and just gave everything they had not caring if everything was perfectly tuned and whatnot that was how you were with Hanoi Rocks that's how you've been through your solo career do you ever just feel like oh I should probably calm down or whatever or do, or do you just love just going out there balls out and not caring mm -hmm. Yeah, the the letter and the ball 
was uh, not caring is the best. Yeah, that's. <laughs> the, yeah, you just throw yourself into it full on, and uh, you know, of course, we've we've evolved uh, over the years. We've gotten better, and our guitars are in better are in better tune than with Hanoi, I'm sure. <laughs> But uh, <laughs> back then was, uh, you know, we hardly had any, they didn't have tuners back in the day, really. Uh, or they started having them, but uh, yeah, we were, we were just, and the, the band is such, we're, you know, everybody's such a great musician and uh, player that uh, it's a pleasure playing with these guys, knowing that we don't really have to worry about, you know, if there's, if there's any uh, screw-ups, then uh, it's only only fun, you know, and people love that stuff, and, mm-hmm. uh, you know. It's it's really a pleasure playing with these guys. Every every gig is you know either either good or great or brilliant. You know <laughs> those are the options. <laughs> we have, have a great right because we have a great time and uh, really uh, it's honest and it's from the heart and you know uh, sincere. We really have a good time and everybody and the audiences have a good time and really uh, and the music is this time you know we we did three weeks in uh, in Central Europe and. You know, ten dates in the UK just now, and and living on a bus, you know, you had to have a good group around you. You don't want to, you don't want one guy there to be, you know, negative or anything. So, you know, we get along real good. And doing these shows, we played, we started, I mean, playing in places like Paris and where we had we hardly ever played before. Mm-hmm. Uh, and starting the show, with, you know, five first songs of the album, we started pretty much. We played the uh, the new album from from uh you know one man gang last year like the a side of the album we played in in a row pretty right. much and then mm-hmm. and then uh then there's a couple of you know the old ones and then some more and the all together we started out with all 11 songs of the new album but now then there were a bit too many uh slow ones for our live thing so we tightened it up a little and uh it was you know seven songs of the new album were in the set at least you know throughout the whole tour and it was great, you know, and the new songs go down real well. People love it and we had a good time. And uh, it's good to be able to play, you know, the new new album. Uh, and we've been so, it's been a while since we had had a new album to play, uh, new songs to play. So right. We've, we're having a blast too uh, with this new stuff. And it was really, really a strong album. And songs that are really good to play live. And they're really made for playing live and recorded that way too. There's not too many overdubs, so it really right. sounds good. You know, it's funny yeah. because I really... One of the things I noticed with uh, – especially with the live set, which I happen to catch some on YouTube since that's my only way to see Michael Monroe live right now. Um, but mm-hmm. it is – it says a lot when an artist and you know, and or a band goes out and plays a lot of material from a new album. I think it speaks volumes to how proud they are of their new material and how they think – it, how they think it holds up to or measures up to what is considered their classics. And, you know, that's kind of a bold thing, especially for someone like you who, you know, who has legendary Hanoi Rocks material. Um, you've got a long uh, solo career and whatnot, but yet you still always manage to get out there and play a lot of new material whenever you create it. Yeah. It would probably be easier for you to go out and do like a whole set of Hanoi Rocks. But what what is it that keeps you from doing that? Well, because we we do create new stuff that's that's uh, it's only getting better, and uh, you know this band is really what we uh, what we do is I, I mean you know why play the old songs because you have a lot of the new material that's more contemporary for us, and then we always play some of the you know the old Hanoi ones. There's always somebody's going to want to hear you know the. Uh, up around the band that don't you ever leave me and some of the Malibu Beach and stuff and mm-hmm. we don't want to let those people down of course and Demolition 23 Nothing's Alright Heaven Must Be The Day and, mm-hmm. and songs that you know and then our our own you know big ones like Battle of the Lower East Side and uh, 78s and you know Old King's Road and stuff that's you know it's always going to be there but <clears throat> of course you want to play the new stuff rather because it's because uh, it's, <laughs> it's it's good it's good enough stuff as try. I'd rather be playing uh be, be in this position uh, to be playing uh, my current albums rather than some of the old 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 songs and not have anything special anything new that's you know good enough uh, it's it's great stuff it's a strong album so why not play it you know I, I, we're creating new material all the time and it's it's really good so uh 
I don't. I really don't want to be. I, I don't mind playing the old songs, and uh, but some bands play only <laughs> like some bands make records uh, just. <laughs> as an excuse to go on the road and then mm-hmm. maybe play one song of the new album and the rest of it's all the old old hits from the 80s or something i'd rather be in this position you know where uh we're creating new new material and playing most of the new album than uh, live in the past you know of course i've loved everything you put out but for some reason this album just resonated with me more so than anything you've ever done i don't know if it's that i'm getting older and i you know i'm kind of getting nostalgic and whatnot but no, nah, no, no, no. It's just a good record, man. <laughs> <laughs> well, of course it is. But like, you know, like I said, but in listening to the album, you know, songs like, you know, you know like like Last Train to Tokyo has this very Ramones feel to it. And I think it showed that you had this love for that old school New York kind of, you know, glam punk. And then like Wasted Years actually seemed to really just kind of time warp back to the Hanoi Rocks days, which shows that you're still very proud of that sound and, and what you did with that band. Yeah. But you're not going to just live yeah, all of, on all that of band. Us. Yeah, no, no, no. And all of us are, you know, the whole band, Rich Jones, Steve Conte, and, you know, Sammy and Carl. I mean, we're all into the same kind of music and, and we have similar, you know, we we come from the same place and we share the same vision. So it's really... Really, it comes natural to us. We mm-hmm. just like that kind of, you know, that, that that's the best kind of music to us, and we, it's just natural, and it's it's you know, it's, it's what we like, and uh, that's I think this well, the band is dev- developing all the time. We're evolving and getting better, and that's I think this is really a strong album, if if not the strongest. I mean, every every album we've done with this band, the, the past four albums have really have a strong uh, identity then mm-hmm. on their own, and. Uh, but uh, I think we're getting better, and it's a good thing. And really, this is the kind of music we like and we live, and this is what I'm about, and uh, that's why it's uh, what it is, you know. But it's also, there's uh, new dimensions. I think I like the fact that, like, a song like In, in the Tall Grass, for example, it's really different. Mm-hmm. When I was going through it, it's really about, like, the, the sort of like the end of the innocence when you're a teenager and you realize the world isn't such a safe place after all. And mm-hmm. I tried to sing the verses kind of like like an innocent child you know and then i listened back to it and i was like wow i never sang like that before it went mm-hmm. pretty soft and somebody asked me in an interview actually somebody actually asked me that who was singing the verses in, in the tall grass I was like, it's me why why what do you mean it's me oh okay because they thought I it was somebody that. else said, well that's really cool even i knew and that like, man <laughs> like i was just like wow this is right, another side anyway. of michael that i've never right. heard before Right, and that's I like that you know, you know new finding new dimensions in the vocal. You know, you try to exp- uh, you try to uh, you know uh, ex- experiment, experiment, and you know, evolve and get better at what you do, and trying to do things like that. It's and succeeding in it. That's great, you know. That's and wasted years, for example. I had sung the lead, the lead vocal on that. It's uh, and I was you know we were at the mixing stage, and I was. I uh, I was thinking it wasn't really happening. It's something mm-hmm. missing there, and it was too stiff, you know. And, and then I figured, oh, and then, you know, I'll go for a real more, more, bit more laid back approach and have a uh, more like, you know, like Mick Jagger. And I envy him because he's so laid back always. It's like he sounds like he just got out of bed when, <laughs> you know, some songs. <laughs> so I went for that kind of laid back appro- approach, more like behind the beat as opposed to, you know, on the beat. And mm-hmm. uh, that was the key to it. And that was. The, the, it was way better that, that's when I really clicked with that song you know so uh, and also that kind of thing I've rarely done before so it's always great to find that you can you can uh, expand your horizons and you know try out new stuff and you're evolving and it's, it's you're never ready it's always something you can do you know differently and, and better and that's that's what keeps me hungry and keeps it thing exciting oh yeah so i mean we're that's why we're so enthusiastic about it still you know you know when i first discovered hannah rocks and like i said like in you know 88 or so was that i remembered even as a young kid it uh, the songs kind of had this way of taking you away or taking me away from everything that was kind of going on in, in, in the world. But at the same time, it still kind of kept me in touch with what was going on. And then you know, come the release of Not Faking It, I remember there was a specific song on that album that really moved me, and still to this day, uh, uh, Man With No Eyes. And it's uh-huh. kind of scary how that 
song is so relevant with everything that's going on right now in America and the world yeah. in general. How have you been impacted by what's this whole circus that's going on in America right now? Well, I've, well, maybe uh, mainly I feel like I don't need to explain things anymore. As as back in those days, you know, in the eighties, not many people paid attention to a lot of those things, and mm -hmm. you know, like the man with the eyes, what he's saying. Now I just feel like. I don't, I don't, I don't feel that much of a need to explain things to people because it's so black and white. It's so, <laughs> so clearly in their face that, uh, you know, even a blind man can see what's going on mm -hmm. in the world now. And, and it's, you know, it's pretty scary. But uh, you know, what can you do but acknowledge the fact that, uh, and not, you know, not try to hide hide the fact just tell the truth tell it like it is like in john planets so that's sort of like just <laughs> acknowledging the fact that you know where uh, the global warming is not even not a threat anymore it's an ongoing disaster and right. you know having having a couple of uh, some of the biggest countries leaders in the world being completely denial about it it's not very encouraging it's pretty scary that everything is just you know all the bits in any second and the, the, the fact that uh, they're still building like weapons of destruction while, while the planet is being destroyed already mm -hmm. anyways and instead of finding cures for diseases and cancer and everything you know it's, it's totally total insanity but uh i don't know what else to do but uh, sort of just by example and by what i say you know to try to try to get the collective consciousness to sort of <laughs> be more uh, aware and perhaps uh, you know every by little things people everyone could do their do little things to make you know make things better for the environment and stuff you can you can do uh, so as much as you can but uh, then yeah, the and the big leaders and whatever the people that are really in the power of doing something they uh, right. for some reason they just don't I guess they don't care about their own children you know, or the future generations for uh, you know because you know if we continue this way it's, you know within a couple of hundred years it's, it's all going to be history you know I know and it's, it's a so, shame yeah because like I remember you know as like I said as you know a young guy in tenth grade hearing man with no eyes and thinking to myself like wow that is you know it, it was it was very awakening for me but at the same time you know in that era we didn't have the internet we didn't have all this stuff where news was just That's right. put out in your face 24 7 and like i relied almost on music more so than anything to kind of let me know what was going on out there because I didn't relate to the news people and I didn't relate to, you know, quote unquote old people. You know what I mean? Like I related to, you know, Michael Monroe and I related to the Ramones and people who were actually uh -huh. singing about social consciousness. Yeah. And, yeah. Musicians tell the truth. The politicians are only acting on self interest and they, they really don't care. They care too much about the money and their, you know, well, their high salary they're raising. But the thing is, with, Musicians can make things happen if they want to because they truly care. Like Bob Geldof showed with Live, Live Aid. Mm -hmm. But, you know, it's funny that in internet, uh, uh, you said there was no internet back in the day uh, with a man with no eyes. Right? And I'm singing, uh, when you get caught in the net, uh, in the lyrics, it says you get caught in the net, right? <laughs> I didn't know about the internet, but that was like a premonition, I guess. Or, it's a very, it's uh, a you know, very, I didn't, it's a very I didn't even know what lyric. I was saying, but I knew it. Right? Yeah. I mean, when we played that song lately, we've been playing that song, of course, I sing, uh, you get caught in the internet. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's so, it's so true because even though it's a different phrase of using that word, again, it kind of has this relevance in this day and time where, like, yeah, yeah. like you said, like it's almost kind of, you know, you're addressing stuff. It, it shows you how sadly the world hasn't changed much in 20 something years yeah exactly you know and that's right that's right but music has changed it's really and, too bad yeah and but like as far as music music seems to have changed you know we've had all kinds of different styles of hard rock and heavy metal and rock and roll but like everything else it seems to be a very cyclical thing so we're coming full circle around what do you think of some of the new bands that are coming out that are kind of embracing that classic sound of music that bands like, you know, Hanoi Rocks and, you know, Ramones and, you know, even bands like ACDC and Led Zeppelin, you know, are starting this hear that in younger bands. 
Like, are you hearing that yourself? Uh, I, I don't know. Uh, I don't really follow stuff that closely. I mean, there's some bands I've heard that seem to be doing similar stuff. Say some names. Uh, well, I guess there's something I saw. Um, like Rival Sons, have you heard <laughs> of them? And, you know, like they. Kind yeah, of yeah, yeah. That, something you know? like, yeah. Those kind of bands, yeah, they have like the, the right ingredients and and mm-hmm. they're doing the right such, sort of right type of thing, right? Right. So there's, I mean, there's good bands around, and I'm thank God that the Foo Fighters are as big as they are, and and, and thank God that Slash is one of the biggest guitars in the world because he's playing the right style of guitar. And, mm-hmm. and apart from being a real nice guy, you know, <laughs> being a hot right. guy with the heart of gold and. But uh, really, the style of music, uh, there's so much, uh, you know, shit out there that's really not that's really confusing must be confusing to people and uh, rock and roll obviously is not on that much on the map but it'll always be people will always appreciate it, i'm sure true you know authentic real rock and roll and you can you can tell when it's not phony i mean you know there's a lot of fake stuff too and that that sells and uh, but you know, um, most people probably don't take it as serious as seriously as we do, as mm-hmm. as we as and aren't as passionate about it as we are right. as musicians and, and fans and you know who are really <laughs> living it. And uh, therefore, some most people I would say they just want something that goes in one ear and out the other and and so on. But uh, I think good rock and roll a real band like uh, you know like what we do live you gotta really you just gotta be there in the moment and you can't you just can't download it or by pushing a button you know you can there's a bunch of music that people make you know technically uh, the di- digital age and whatever I mean I don't think it's a it hasn't gotten much it hasn't gotten any better anyways mm-hmm. sound wise I think I don't think it's a sign of old age when you say that things were better before, but I think it's just in the 60s and 70s and early 80s, people made music more for music's sake as opposed to marketing and selling, you know, the record, the business has become such a big deal that, uh, you know, music has no business in the music business. And it really, you can hear it. That's why it sounds the way it does. Because uh, most people just want to do it to get famous and rich and, uh, uh, before they used to be more like it was more fun, you know, mic in the drums and you know getting your own sounds and band, bands had more personality and and uh, artists were you know the music was better because you know we didn't think about you know how how we're gonna market this and there were no there were no trans genres like you know categories like uh, grunge and you know metal and you know stuff like that. I think those are it's unnecessary to categorize music i think it's just good music's good music and and the more different uh, bands there are different styles the more fun it is and you know everybody used to do their own thing more and uh, then there came a time where there was like for example grunge you know the people you know nirvana came out and became huge and they were great you know and then somebody came up with this grunge thing and, was, mm-hmm. and then there's like two million bands trying to trying to sound like nirvana but never as good as them of course and uh it's boring when everyone sounds the same, and you know, and the record companies, of course, the record labels, they encourage that because they think, okay, here's a new thing we can, here's a package we can sell, you know. So <clears throat> that's why the quality of music has gone down. I think, you know, so and I don't know what the <laughs> what the cure, what the answer is. I'm just gonna keep doing my thing, and uh, hopefully, uh, uh, people, uh, you know, will get to expand our fame in some ways and you know because anybody who comes to see my band this band is you know always everybody everybody leaves with a smile on their face and very happy and uh, you know that's what we do and there's a lot of good bands there i'm sure it's just got to find them and uh, it's encouraging that there are bands like you know royal sons and those guys and there's other bands i can't think of the name now there's another band that was like a young and new well, you know, uh, 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 Gre- the Greta, Greta Van Fleet, uh, I think, is what the, it was. Was that? Uh, yeah, no, I don't. Eh, I'm not sure actually. The <laughs> the Virgin Marys are one of the very, you know, you know, in England, the Virgin Marys, they're pretty young, and uh, oh, they had this great song, them. "Bang Bang Bang." There's a song called "Bang Bang Bang" mm-hmm. by the Virgin Marys. Check it out; it's a great song, and they're really a cool band, and nice guys, three piece band. That uh, I heard this the song on a. Uh, compilation that Slash put together for uh, classic rock out of the CD. It was like Radio Slash or something it was called. Mm-hmm. And, uh, 
we it had uh, our sort of song seventy eight was the number one song in it, and then I listened to the CD and there was uh, this other cool stuff too, Rory Gallagher and stuff, and then there was this song Bang 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 by the Virgin Marys, and I was that's how I discovered that band. It was a great song. Uh, that's a good new band. Mm. You know, oh, yeah. There's good bands, I'm sure. And it, it got, it's got to come, you know, full circle. At some point, you know, uh, people uh, have to get tired of the, the, the uh, you know, the superficial stuff and whatever, you know. Oh, yeah. You know, it's like everybody who says that kind of, you know, I, I feel like, so, you know, I'm 46 now, but I feel like every five years or 10 years I heard the, oh, rock and roll is dead. And I read a really great article uh, a few months ago where they were talking about the whole concept of rock and roll. And they said, you know, all the best rock and roll was never really the stuff that was out on the forefront. Like if you went to the underground, that was where you found the truly great stuff. You know, even though you had Zeppelin and ACDC and they were riding on top and they were great, there were so many bands underneath that never got the exposure that were incredible bands. Yeah, that's so the thing. Rock and roll is kind of, in a lot of ways, back where it started, in the underground, you know? Yeah. Yeah, that's that's true. That's what it is. And the coolest stuff, you know, most of my favorite bands are never huge mainstream successes mm-hmm. so yeah it, you're right all the coolest stuff is uh is not necessarily in the forefront you're right you're right about that yeah and i remember reading interviews with you back in the day and, uh, and i forgot who it was or where it was but somebody asked you what you listened to and i remember you were talking about you like little richard and all these bands like it was because of you that i would go venture off into discovering uh-huh. these this music that I never knew existed. So there's something strong about finding music that you didn't know of or that you weren't aware of or that maybe at that time in your life isn't commercially successful. Do you know what I mean? Right, right, exactly. That, you know, uh, and a lot of records that, a lot of phony records uh, phony rock and roll that can sell millions it doesn't mean that it's great even though it sells you know that's also confusing to people some of the best stuff is uh, more obscure so some of the stuff like you said it's true that is just a fact uh, so so you know 10 million fans can be wrong <laughs> <laughs> oh i <laughs> love that that's so true and you know what one of the things you i was thinking about as you were talking was that especially in the age of the internet digital music like anybody can make a record now you know so like back in the day where you had you really only heard of a band if they put out an album or if someone you know told you about them but now there's so much music so do you think that oversaturation might be what's keeping some of the truly great bands from being discovered and that's possible uh yeah, it could be. I mean, I don't know. I really don't know. I have no, still don't have an answer to what, what, why, what, why things are happening and what, what's not. Could be. Could very well be. I don't know. Works really out of. Yeah, how it to just seems people. like there. It just seems like there's so much music out there now. Like it's almost too much sometimes. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, exactly. There's, there could be like, uh, yeah, when there's, it can be confusing, and, and especially when there's with all this commercial stuff that they they shove down your throat, and uh, you know, especially this stuff that you know, little kids are so susceptible to influence, and, and they want to be, you know, in fa- fashionable, and you know, what's cool to dig and stuff, and mm-hmm. push button music. And then, you know, there's a lot of stuff with, you know, especially with the, I mean, I like melodies and, you know, somebody talking over a drum beat doesn't really do it to me, you know, unless they have really <laughs> something to say. Like the original idea was in rap, she was telling the truth and, and shaking the establishment. Like, you know, the punk thing was good because it was, it was an attitude and mm-hmm. really a kick in the ass and, you know, a reminder to all the, even the, the rock bands that were like rich and out of touch with reality, living in their castles, it was just like, hey, you don't have to be a virtuoso player as long as you got something to say, write songs that mean something and you and you kick ass. And then, you know, uh, that was that was cool, but 
And also then all this uh, cartoon rock kind of like, well, you know, it's the kind of metal where people are just growling and, you know, <laughs> um, there's no melody there either. It's just noise, you know. So to me, I, I like melodies in music and uh, of course you got to have good energy and, and uh, you kick ass with songs, you know, uh, that's how you me- memorize songs. <laughs> there's a melody. You were talking about the whole screaming and the whole growling and stuff. And I remember I, I talked to uh, one of my readers one time and he was saying how how much he liked death metal. And I was like, why do you like it so much? And, and he said, oh, I like what, they, what they're what they saying. And I was like, "How?" Can, in my mind, I go, okay, he sounds like he's saying something angry, but I don't know what he's saying, <laughs> you know? Yeah, yeah. Then you, read, and then you read the lyrics, you find out they're singing about Satan and then some stupid, you know, some... <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, or uh, all this devil, this and that, and and that, and it's like, come on, man, you know, are you are you serious? You know, I mean, it can't be can't be serious. I mean, if you, yeah, I think Satan sucks, man. I mean, maybe <laughs> maybe he sell, it can sell, but I think Jesus is style better. Like he says, I ain't walking on water, but I know a trick or two. You know, Jesus walked on water. I don't know how to do that one. I got a, a couple of tricks of my own. You know, <laughs> man. that's what that lyrics about. You know, and uh, wanting to. Uh, uh, the everybody's pissing on their own parade. It's about you know uh, people voting for things like Trump and Brexit, and then they're wondering why everything's all screwed up, complaining about why, how the world is all all messed up, and then you know it's just like they bring it on to themselves. And I kind of try to rise above that, with, uh, you know, uh, uh, running on the PMA, positive mental attitude. Mm-hmm. Try to rise above it, you know. And love must conquer hate, and they like. Will always conquer darkness, and that's the way I think of it. And and it's not a wimpy thing; it's it's a cool thing. You know, it's just it's always stronger. I'm on the light side, no matter what. And you know, I know the devil and all that stuff. You know very well. I've been there, and you know, <laughs> gone through the mm-hmm. you know uh, tortures of the damned, and through the darkness and dark times and everything. But you know, it's really really a positive attitude. Whatever you focus on tends to you know, multiply, and then that w- that's why it's, I'd rather try to concentrate on the positive than the negative. If you keep thinking everything's fu- all screwed up, and you know, it's, it's all mm-hmm. it's all fucking shit, anyways. I don't give a shit about nothing. You know, it's <laughs> easy to say that, but but uh, you know, if you think that way, then things will start going that way in your life. It's one of the things, one of many things that I've always loved about you and your music and just your energy, and it's one of the th- reasons why you've been around for so long and show no signs of stopping and I, I can't even tell you what an honor it is to talk to you because I being a longtime fan you are such a good person and just a great musician and you I, you just continue Thank to you, so much. you just continue to bring me lots of joy with all the music you put out. Oh, thank you. That's really nice to hear. That that's the kind of thing that keeps me going, you know, and hearing that that uh, you know really means a lot to me. Thank you. I wore your face on my shirt many years, so. <laughs> oh, <laughs> well, that's cool, man. Yeah, at least I can say that you're, I'm, I, I'm for real, anyways. At least you're not, uh, you know, uh, wearing some somebody who's a fake or a phony. I, at least I'm for real. Uh, that I can, I can say with no worries. So, well, like, yeah, the, you're, like you're the shirt, the right track. Well, like, well, like the shirt said, it said not what? fake in it. So, <laughs> so. yeah, yeah. Well, that was the point. Yeah, I'm not, I'm not trying to say I'm any more real than anyone else, but not fake is for sure. At least it's it's uh, sincere and it's authentic and it's honest from the heart. It so, really uh, is. All I can say. Well, Michael, thank yeah. you so much for doing this today, and I really enjoy talking to you. And you're you're a great guy. And thank you again for all the years of incredible music. And let's have many more. Thank you so much. Yes, thank you. I hope I uh, hope you'll get to see us live. You don't have to look at the internet, the uh, YouTube, for the live things. I hope one of these days soon we'll uh, get a chance. You'll get a chance to be at the live shows because it's something else. Well, like I said, if anything, we'll get you over here crash in my basement and we'll have a jam all right <laughs> you got it man <laughs> thank great you great talking so... to you too. thanks so much all right michael you. you too and have a great day thanks you too take right. care bye-bye bye now Say